get to question number eight. Uh, these questions have to do with uh, mirrors and lenses. We're going to have several questions like that. It says, which of the following is true? A, nearsighted people must wear converging lenses. B, convex mirrors have a negative focal length. C, concave mirrors always give real images. D, diverging lenses are used as magnifying glasses. So in order to go through these questions, uh, I have to explain a little bit about the theory of each one so that you can get why the answer is such. So A, nearsighted people wear converging lenses. Well, what are converging lenses? Converging lenses are the ones that are generally fatter on the middle and then uh, near the edges they are thinner, right? So what do converging lenses tend to do? They tend to take the uh, rays of light and bend them inward, okay? Bend them inward, bend them inward, inward, and they tend to uh, make an image here, okay? Usually the image will be inverted and uh, sometimes the image will be diminished, sometimes the image will be enlarged, depending on where the object is. So let's talk a little bit about what nearsightedness is and what farsightedness. Nearsightedness. Nearsighted means you can see near, you can't see far, right? So nearsighted, let's say here's your eyeball, okay? You can see an object that is near, well, that's good. You, your eye can take that object that is near and it can make an image of it over here inverted in your retina and uh, your brain can then reverse that, right? So basically your eye, the cornea of your eye is acting like a converging lens is taking the object that is near, forming an image of it in your retina, in the back of your eye, and then your brain is flipping that again and making a right side image, okay? Now, if the image, if the object is far, why can't a nearsighted person see that? Well, here is what is happening. The nearsighted person's converging lens is too thick, it's too strong, okay? It's kind of weird to really say it this way. In a way, when you are nearsighted, your eye is too strong. It's too strong of a lens, right? So basically, this part is too thick, right? So what is happening is this. The beam of light is coming. Since your uh, uh, cornea is very strong, it's forming an image too early too early. It's not forming an image in the back of your eye. The image is forming too early, okay? So what kind of a lens do we need? What kind of a lens is going to help us? Well, if you put another converging lens, another one of these over there, what is that going to do? It's not going to help, right? It's going to make your eye doubly strong, which, is, which means the image is going to form even earlier, right? So what kind of lens do we need? We need diverging lens, right? What kind of lens is diverging? Diverging lens is one that is generally thinner in the middle. What general effect do diverging lens do? Well, if an object's beam of light is coming, they tend to diverge the beams of light Diverge, diverge, and if you look from this side, they appear to be coming from here. So what effect do they have? They have the effect of making the object appear as if it is closer, and they have the effect of making the beams of light wider apart, as if the object is coming from here, the beams of light are emanating from here, right? So nearsighted person needs this effect. They need to wear a diverging lens so that the beam of light from coming from very far can come, diverge outward, diverge outward, right? It's gonna come, diverge out, come, diverge out, and then 
your eye, since he was overly strong, your eye would think the object is actually here, and it will form an image in the back, okay? So one of the ways to surgically repair a nearsighted person is that you have to, with the laser, you have to cut part of this, and that's called LASIK surgery. You cut part of the cornea so that the, you cut away from the curvature of the cornea, okay? So, A, nearsighted people must wear converging. No, it's wrong. B, convex mirrors have a negative focal length, okay? What kind of mirror is a convex mirror? If you are standing in front of a mirror, this is the kind of mirror called the convex mirror. If you go to my demos uh, playlist, you will see I have a bunch of demos, and one of the demos I have there, I'm actually doing uh, some experiments with convex and concave mirrors. You can see that. A convex mirror's radius of curvature is in the imaginary world. The radius of curvature is somewhere here. The focal length is half of that. So since the focal length is in the imaginary world, the focal length is negative. The radius is also negative. Convex mirrors tend to take the beam of light and reflect them outward. Reflect them outward. And they have the effect of forming the image here. Okay, so if you're standing in front of a convex mirror, you're always going to see an image of yourself that is smaller than yourself. And it's going to be an imaginary image on the other side of the mirror, okay? So to illustrate this, you can even take a spoon and look at the part of the spoon that's curved towards you, right? The spoon can be like this, like that, and look at the part of the spoon towards you. If you turn it around, it'll be a concave mirror. You'll be looking at the part of the spoon facing you, okay? So B, convex mirrors have a negative focal length. True. They have negative focal length, it's on the other side. And the reason why is because it's in the imaginary world, the other side of the mirror, okay? Uh, C, concave mirrors always give real images. Let's see if that's true. Okay, here is a concave mirror. Well, it turns out that this is not true. If you're standing very far away from a concave mirror, Let's say here's the radius of curvature, and the focal length is half the radius of curvature. A straight beam of light will go through the focal length. A beam of light aimed for the focal length will reflect straight. You will form a, an image here. So if you're standing far from a concave mirror, yes, you will form a real image here inverted. And again, you can test this with a spoon. The spoon is facing you. As you get closer and closer, what's going to happen? If you're standing here, if you're standing between the radius of curvature and the focal point, you will go like this, you will go like this, you will go, uh, you will go like this, uh, you will go hit the mirror here, and you will come out like that. You will form an image right here, okay? So what will happen as you get closer to the mirror, your image gets bigger, 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 bigger. You can take the spoon, bring it up closer, closer, closer. You form a bigger image of yourself, but it's inverted and it's real, okay? What happens if you go inside of the focal length, if you get too close to the mirror, okay? So if this is the focal length and uh, you are standing here, what's gonna happen? Well. A straight beam of light will reflect back to go through the focal point. A beam of light aimed for the center will reflect back with the same angle. They will never converge here. That means you're too close to the mirror. The mirror has not the ability to converge those rays of light. So it will appear as if the beams of light are coming from behind the mirror in the imaginary world. We call that a virtual image. And it will be bigger than yourself. So all of a sudden, it will turn from an inverted real image to an upright virtual image, okay? So it is false to say 
Concave mirrors always give real images. D. Diverging lenses are used as magnifying glasses. Well, a minute ago I explained about diverging lenses. Let's look quickly to see if this is true. We said the diverging lens has a tendency of diverging the rays of light, right? The focal length of the diverging lens is here, and it will appear, the straight ray of light will appear as if it's coming from the focal length. This one will appear as if it's coming from here. It will form an image here. So we said a minute ago that the diverging lens has a tendency of bringing the image closer to you. The other tendency that it has is to diminish the image. It makes the image look as if it is smaller than its true size. So D, diverging lenses are used as magnifying glasses? No, okay? What kind of lenses are used as magnifying glasses? Converging lenses. You bring an, an object close to a converging lens, it will magnify it, okay? So the only one that's true is B, okay? Thank you very much.